Okay, we're going to do level three. We're going to construct a square using perpendicular bisectors. And uh, just to review what a square is, just to be specific, it has four sides and all four sides are congruent. Uh, the interior angles will add up to 360 and each one, all four of them will be 90 degrees. Okay, um, the reason a perpendicular bisector is useful in constructing a square is that it's perpendicular. It means it's 90 degrees. So it's a way to make a 90 degree angle without anything to measure it. So, the first thing we're going to do with the segment is we're going to make a perpendicular bisector. Now, remind me guys, um, how long is this segment? X. X. So when we bisect it, how long will the two segments be that we make? X over 2. X over 2, right. So here's our perpendicular bisector happening right here. You guys all mastered level 2, so you know how to do a perpendicular bisector. Okay. Now what we do, of course, is we connect it. And here's what I'm going to recommend that you do. With a segment above, go, go long. Make it longer than it needs to be. All right? And let's think for a second. What's the measurement of this angle right here? 90. 90. How do we know? Because it's in my because it's perpendicular. Good. And then if the whole segment was x, how long is this segment here? x over 2. Okay. Any questions there? x over 2, right? All right. So um, this is going to be the first side of our square. Okay. Obviously, the next side of our square is going to go up this way. So how long will every side of the square be? What, how long will every side of the square be? X over 2. Okay, so without using a ruler, how can we tell how long X over 2 is right here? Without, without a protractor, what we'll use is compass. And here's what we do. You go to the vertex, you go to the end point, and you measure. That's X over 2. You measure the... You, take, you don't have to actually draw the arc, but see, if that's the distance with the compass, then that's the same distance. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay. And how long did the original segment have to be? It had to be x, right? So this isn't x. This is x over 2. So we've got to make it x. Okay. You guys understand that from here to here is x? Uh -huh. Is everybody with me on that? Yeah? So if that's x... And then we can do a new perpendicular bisector from here to here. So I'll do another perpendicular bisector coming from here and here. And what happens, if I line it up, it's kind of nice, it goes right through that mark, doesn't it? Which it should, because that makes it X. So now, thinking about my square, which way is this side going to go? It's going to go in this direction. So the, the spot that I really need to fill out is all of this over here. Okay? So guys, what's the measure of this angle here? <coughs> 90, because it's our perpendicular bisector. And now we have the second side of our square complete. It's right here. Making sense to you guys a little bit? Yeah. Yes? Some say yes, some say. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um, so, guys, how long is the side length here? Uh, it's not x. How long is every side of the square? X, x squared. No. I mean, x. x over 2. Okay, so if I want to mark x over 2 over here, what I can do again is measure it with my compass and mark it over here. If I want to do a full X, I just go from there and do another one. And that's X. You guys see? X over 2, X over 2. If this is X over 2 and this is X over 2, this whole distance has to be X. You guys understand that? Yes or no? This is X right here because it's two X over 2s. All right. So now we're going to do another 
perpendicular bisector of this segment length x. So perpendicular bisector, we're going to make arcs up here, here, and we're going to construct from here to here. And what you'll notice is that it finishes our square. What's the measure of this angle right here? 90. This is the side of the square. How long is this side here? X over 2. How long is this side here? X over 2. And what's the measure of this angle here? 90. So does everybody see our square come out of all this? Madness? It's pretty amazing. It's a bunch of arcs that together give us the, peri the perimeter, or the, uh, all the markings of a square. Okay, so that was the first time. Now I'm going to do a second one so you guys can have more exposure, but also the second one we're going to do, instead of using X, we're going to use a real measurement so that the math, we can do the math while we're doing it, okay? So we'll do a similar one. Try to follow along again. Constructing a square using perpendicular bisectors. This time we're going to start with a uh, segment length that's easy to do math with. We're going to use 20. Does anyone want to guess why we're using 20? It's easy. Because when you divide 20 by 2, you get everybody's favorite number, the easiest number to do math with, 10. Okay? So we're going to do 20. By the way, even if you don't make, make yours actually 20 inches, just label it 20 units. That way it'll be easy for you to do the math and it'll look like mine. So that's a good idea. Um, okay. So we're going to do a perpendicular bisector. So I come to my endpoints. Do an arc at this endpoint. Do an arc at this endpoint. And I construct the perpendicular bisector. And one thing I want to make clear is it's a really good idea with your perpendicular bisector to go beyond, go really long on the side that you want to go with your square. Because I, I don't want to have to add to this to make it longer. I want it to be already long enough. It's easier to cut than it is to add on. Okay. So now, I've done a perpendicular bisector. So if this is 20, what's this distance here? 10. 10. Okay. So that's 10 inches. It's also the first side of our square. And if this is a correct perpendicular bisector, what's the measure of this angle here? 90, of course, because it's perpendicular. Okay, now this is the part that can kind of throw people off. If I want this next one to be 10 inches, and I don't have any way of measuring it, what I can do is measure it with my arc. What's this distance going to be right here? 10. 10. Logically, right? Because it has to be. And then, what's the distance between my tips right now? 10. So if I go to here and make another mark, 20. this whole thing is 20. Is that clear to everybody? Okay, so that's 20. I don't need any more of this. What I've got here is a 20 inch segment, which means I can repeat the first process. And now everything I'm going to do for the rest of this construction is just repetition. So I can come from here. And from here. I've got my perpendicular bisector. So I can have my segment. Now tell me guys, what's the measure of this angle right here? Right. 90. We now have the second side of the square. It's right here. Right? And now, if this is 10 right here, I can make a mark right here. And that will be also how far? 10. And so the last one, the other mark out here, that would mark 20, right? So now I can take this segment here, that's 20, I can do another perpendicular bisector and that will give me another 90 degree angle, another 10 inch segment and it will finish my square. Watch how it happens. 
By the way, just so you know, this is something I had to do a lot when I was in architecture class, freshman year in college, while I was taking calculus. It's kind of awesome that you guys are doing this in geometry. All right, so when I connect this, what happens is that I get my perpendicular bisector. So what's the measure of this angle right here? 90. This segment here is how long? 10 inches. 10 inches. How long is this segment? 10. 10 inches. What's the measure of this angle here? 90. 90. Okay. Lastly, let's answer a series of questions about our square. Um, first of all, what's the side length of our square? 10 what? 10 inches. 10 inches. Good. So 10 inches. What would be the perimeter of our square? 40 inches. 40, because 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, 40 inches. And the area of the square is going to be 10 times 10. So what will that be? 100. Anybody have a guess on how to write this? Is it 100 inches? We talked about this before. 100 what? Square. We're not going to say units, because we know it's inches. So it's going to be 100 inches squared, just like that. And that does it. We constructed a square using only perpendicular bi bisectors, and we did some math with it. Okay, that's some dense geometry, so cool. Watch it a bunch of times. Good luck. Thank you.